any of those any of those questions. Um, but as Sylvia mentioned, I'm going to share my screen now. And we're going to be talking about setting financial goals and understanding um, your financial priorities. And for me, this is probably the most important piece of when we're talking about um, creating a, a financial plan, understanding where you are with your money and where you want to go is really the very first important piece to that. And so we're going to look at how to set a financial goal and understand our priorities so that our priorities are aligning with those financial goals and the things that we want to achieve. Over the course of the next few months, though, you'll hear from Beatriz and she'll give you a lot of different um, skills and a lot of different tools that you can utilize to, to start your financial game plan. Um, but that's what we're gonna we're gonna work today and the very foundational piece of setting that financial goal. So what we're gonna look at is understanding our family's financial values, right? Understanding our values is an important step in creating a goal. Okay. Then we're gonna look at how to set our goals, prioritize our goals, and then monitor our progress towards those goals. And and when we're talking about creating a goal, um, I want you to keep in mind that. It's something that we're striving for, right? Something that we want to achieve, but it's important to remember that we have to maintain some level of flexibility when we are setting our financial goals. And if, if anybody um, can attest to that, it's all of us over the course of this last year probably had different financial goals prior to the pandemic than we do post pandemic life. And so understanding that there has to be a certain level of flexibility is going to be really important. So I'm going to ask you a question and you guys can feel free to unmute or maybe I'll call on a couple of you, but um, when you think about anything that you know about money, right, anything that you've learned from spending it to saving it to sharing it, where did you learn that skill? Anybody have ideas? Family. Your family. Okay. Now, when you say... Uh, when you say you learn that skill from your family, did you learn good skills, good habits, or bad habits? Both. Both? My mom had my mom had the bad habits. My dad had the good habits. So it was a uh, a mix of the two. Okay. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I was the opposite, right? My mom was great with money, and my dad kind of had that attitude, like the Lord will provide. And I was like, well. I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> like, I'm not sure that's a money management plan, but, um, but yeah, so we learned that from our family, right? Um, I see somebody put, oh, taking workshops. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Some level of education, whether we learned it in school or, you know, we join a, a workshop or we're part of a part of a workshop on financial education. Um, we can learn some skills from that. Where else would you learn? Think of anywhere else? I think sometimes you can also learn from friends. Yeah. Um, if they, like I had a friend and she would always be telling me to be prepared for the future and things that, she said, you try to prepare for things that, you know, will always come up, things that you can do. And I always learned a lot from her. She would always be one step away. And I, I can sound a little bit morbid, but she was actually buying plots and everything for her husband and her kid and herself this is back over 40 years ago and she said in the future this is going to be more expensive and i know that i'm going to need this in the future so i'm purchasing things now when i know the prices will be lower right and she would always be teaching me things and i actually follow her lead and it was true it it really made a difference yeah, that's great. Our friends and our family can be mm -hmm. some really good teachers. And, and like we've said, they, they, you know, we could also pick up some bad habits from them, but that sounds like, you know, a friend that you definitely want to, to continue to maintain that relationship with in order to, to pick up some of those good skills. And I mean, I think sometimes when we're talking about lessons that we learn about money, we can also learn through trial and error, right? That's how a lot of right. people figure out how to manage their finances. Now, the problem with that, while that can be an okay teacher at certain times, the problem with that is it could be costly too, right? If we make right. some of those bigger mistakes. And so, you know, it, it, that's not to say we're all gonna make mistakes with money at some point in, in our lives, 
right? But minimizing the cost of those mistakes is going to be um, is going to be really important. Uh, when you think about money, though, what does it mean to you? Like when when I say the word money, what sort of emotion do you do you feel? Security. Security. Great. Do you think, I know that was Stephanie, I could tell by the voice. Um, <laughs> do you think, uh, and I know I always ask you this question, but, um, you know, do, do you think money buys happiness? Do you think that is a... Not at all. No. It's, no, no. no, I don't think it buys happiness, but for me, um, security, knowing that I'm going to be okay is very important. So it, it buys peace of mind. Peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I say that, you know, I ask that question quite a bit and, you know, obviously I get a variety of answers, but, but for me, I think what it does is it provides a whole lot of opportunity, right? And, you know, opportunity and that security and that peace of mind to, to make decisions that maybe we weren't able to make um, prior to that. And so, um, you know, when we talk about it, our spending decisions and our attitudes towards money are influenced by a lot of outside, they're, they're shaped and influenced by a lot of outside um, sources. Uh, you know, when we talk about it, understanding how we view money and how we feel about money is really important, right? And that's what we right. call a value. A value is just a fundamental belief about what we think is important. And so what's interesting is that this is, all, you know, I think it's difficult or, or a little bit more difficult than people think to talk and teach money because we're all, we've all come to this workshop with different ideas about what's important to us, right? right. And so when we're looking at understanding our financial values, oftentimes those financial values influence how we choose to spend or save our money. Right. And for all, all right. of us, that's going to be different on this call. Right. What's important to me may not be important to Sylvia or may not be important to Stephanie. And that's how we choose to allocate. And so that's when we talk about um, the importance of a financial goal. That goal can drive how we make those spending decisions on a on a daily basis. So really understanding your financial values is going to be important. Now I'm seeing I'm going to check that. OK, great. Yeah, those are all church, happy, security. Those are all great. Um, I'm, I'm just reading the chat for uh -huh. all of you. Um, okay. So, um, you know, there are different money personalities. Did anybody in the group have an opportunity to look at our financial values inventory? Um, the financial values inventory was one of the uh, one of the handouts that was sent prior to the workshop. And if you haven't had an opportunity to take it, I would recommend taking it because what it does is it gives us an idea of, you know, when we talk about how we spend our money, oftentimes we um, we we look at stressful situations and the personality that we exhibit is where we go in a stressful situation. And so you may have heard something like um, a, uh, a carefree consumer, right? A carefree consumer might be somebody who, um, a carefree consumer might be somebody who is a little bit more um, willing to recognize that maybe they're, I don't necessarily need to be, they have a carefree attitude about money, right? They value spending in the here and now, right? Um, as opposed to maybe saving for a rainy day. They trust that somebody will help them out in a financial bind, right? We have our status shopper. Our status shopper is somebody who enjoys the process of spending money. And that's okay, right? It's when we're looking at, because um, I don't know anybody who goes into the store and is like, give me the worst pair of shoes you have, right? We, you know, as human beings, we, we like nice things. But what we need to make sure is that our values are aligning with the goals we've set for ourselves. So if the spending decisions we're making on a daily basis aren't driving us towards the financial goals that we've set for ourselves, then maybe we need to reevaluate, right, the financial goal that we set for ourselves or reevaluate 
um, what our financial priorities are, okay? There's also a, a personality type, the frugal spender. They, they place value on using cash and not credit. They keep records of their spending. And you're gonna hear from Beatrice in um, probably a couple of sessions about how to use credit appropriately and to your advantage because it can be a valuable financial tool. Um, and then we also have our resourceful consumer. They, they're that use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without philosophy of spending money. That you know, Having money for the sake of having money is not necessarily the highest priority in their lives. And so we're gonna have a little bit of all these different personalities that we exhibit, but it's typically that when you do that financial values inventory, you're gonna come up with the highest number and that number exhibits where you go to in um, your financial decision-making, particularly when it's a stressful decision that you're making. So I would encourage you all to take that. And then if you wanna chat about it, um, either with myself or Beatriz, um, we're happy to talk to you a little bit about understanding your money personality, because I think once you understand your money personality, you're able to put strategies in place so that you can manage your finances effectively. Okay, so my, hold on. my PowerPoint has frozen. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm gonna stop share and then share again for all of you so you get to, there we go, let's try, <laughs> there we go. I know you're an expert at this. I know. Right? <laughs> I am and I guess it's not, ah, uh, there we go. So again, when we talk about our values, a fundamental belief about what you regard as important. So that's what I want you to think about as you're beginning to set financial goals. I want you to think about what is important to you from, from a, a financial value, right? We all have those different values and recognize your personal values, right? If, if those values aren't aligning with the goals that you've set, then we need, to, we need to just make sure that they're not in conflict with each other and put a strategy in place so that you're starting to reach those financial goals, okay? Um, so, if you had an opportunity to, um, I was going to introduce you guys to a little activity here, but we have, you know, when we're talking about money, it's really about a series of decisions, right? Do right. we, if we had a thousand dollars right now, and so I'll ask you, if you had a thousand dollars right now, right, no strings attached, what would you spend it on? Would you pay down debt or would you buy new clothes? I would pay down debt. You would pay down debt. Yes. Okay. Anybody buy new clothes in that scenario? No? Okay. Well, the, the reason I asked that question is because there's really no, right? It's about making choices and making decisions. And there's really no right or wrong. Maybe some of us are sitting there with minimal debt. And so, yeah, maybe it would be nice if we had some new, um, new pieces to add to our wardrobe. Maybe we're going on job interviews, right? And, and maybe right now having a, you know, a, a good wardrobe or a good piece of clothing would be good going into those job interviews, right? And so that's why it's really about making choices and, and looking at those choices. Um, there is a, a handout that we did provide you and, and it, it allows you to kind of make choices every day about what's important to you. And this can help you as you're starting to prioritize how you want to spend your money and save your money, okay? So once you understand your financial values and your financial personality, the next thing is to set a specific financial goal. And I think this is key. Most people ask me, well, what's so important about managing your finances? And I'll say, yeah, the and they'll say budgeting is the most important. And I, I agree, I think budgeting is a really valuable tool, but setting a financial goal is going to be important because again, I said managing our finances is just a series of um, a series of choices we make on a daily basis. So when we're setting a financial goal, that is actually giving us some drive to move towards that financial goal. And that in turn can help us when we're making choices. So when we look at that 
financial goal, we can look at some of the daily choices we have and say, well, you know what, should I have this extra cup of coffee from Starbucks? Or should I take that $4 and put that towards a different financial goal that I have so that it's moving me towards meeting that overall um, larger financial goal? Okay, so when we, when we uh, talk about setting that financial goal, okay, you want to make sure that you're setting what we call a SMART goal, okay? Uh, first is you want to make it very specific. And so there can be smaller goals that you want to achieve before achieving a larger goal. So for example, a goal may be to, I want to purchase a home, right? However, when we look at making a, a home purchase, we understand that we have to have a well-constructed budget and, and some good credit, right? And so if we don't have great credit at the time that we're thinking we want to set that financial goal to buy a home, then really the goal that we should be focusing on is improving that credit so that we can maximize our borrowing power, right? right. So we want to make sure that our goal is very specific, right? To say, I want to save money, that's a great goal, but it's not very specific, right? Because if I look at, you know, I, I want to save money this month. Well, if I look in my bank account and I've saved $1 at the end of the month, I've reached my goal, but that may not be getting me towards my larger or overarching goal of what I really want to achieve, which might be a down payment for a home or, you know, maybe saving $200 this month or $50 this month, right? So I really right. didn't achieve that goal. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not working towards that. But when we're setting a financial goal, we want to make sure that it's very specific, right? So uh -huh. the example I'll give you is I want to take a vacation to, I don't know, the Grand Canyon, right? A vacation to the Grand Canyon, I've made that very specific, right? You know right. where I want to go. And now we can do some research about what is going to make that goal measurable, right? Because a vacation to the Grand Canyon and a vacation to... Um, the Greek islands are gonna come with two different price tags, right? Yes. So we wanna make sure that we're setting specific goals and then making them measurable. When we're talking about making them measurable, essentially when it's a financial goal, it's really oftentimes just putting a, a number around it, right? Like a price tag. In some cases it might be, you know what, uh, my credit score right now is a 500, but I'd like it to be a 620, right? That's a different kind of number, but we've made it measurable, right? We know right. that over the next few years or over the next year and, and a half, I want to improve my credit score by 120 points, okay? What that does is it, it, it allows my goal to now become tied to a time frame. How can I reasonably achieve that? Um, is the R in our SMART goal, right? And so is that goal also attainable? And that's our A in there, right? How can I attain that goal? What is the time frame for that? And is it a reasonable financial goal that I've set for myself? So what I'd like you to do right now, and you can either type it in the chat, or if you just want to jot it down on a, you know, on the paper that you're furiously taking notes on right now, um, it, I want you to think of a personal financial goal that you want to work towards. And I want you to, to just jot that down. It could just be like save money, right? You can make it broad because we're going to actually go through the process of making it a smart goal. Anybody want to share a goal that they, a financial goal they might have? I want to sure. save money for a trip. Oh. Okay, Sorry. you want to save money for a trip? Okay, yes. good. Keep that in mind because we're gonna mm -hmm. get we're gonna get specific with that in a little bit. Okay, somebody else. I heard somebody else chime in. I want to save money for a house, a car, and just personal savings to pay off my master's degree. Okay, so you have three distinct goals there, right? That we that we want to work towards which is interesting because that, that really ties into that prioritizing of the goal, right? We may not, those are all three really great goals and very specific goals, right? But we could probably make a couple of them a little bit more specific, but they all might fall into these different 
timelines, mm -hmm. right? So what right. would be of those three goals that you just mentioned, what would be the most important to you right now? Save money for, oh, I don't know. They're all kind of coincide with each other, but maybe the most obtainable one is for, I guess, for personal savings. So I can put a down payment on a car and a house. And okay. I, I don't know, because I want all three, so. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> And that can be the challenge, right? We, we want, uh, we have a lot of different goals. And so it's important to understand that we don't just have one financial goal. So, you know, we, we can look and, and you said an important word in there is like right now, what is the most attainable? I oftentimes um, tell people that they should set themselves up for success, right? The more successful we feel um, when we achieve something, that kind of starts a level of momentum, right? So even when we're talking about maybe paying down, you know, there's two ways to pay down credit card debt, the avalanche method and the snowball method, which Beatrice will talk to you about. But for, for a lot of people, um, that snowball method might be the, the, more, the more effective method because it sets us up for, for success. There are timelines around goals, right? Um, a short-term goal is something that we can accomplish in two years, right? Mm -hmm. A midterm takes a little bit longer, two to five, and then that long-term uh, might be five years or more. And so if we break down those goals that you just said, you know, maybe that short-term financial goal is to, to start saving enough money for a down payment on a car, right? That might be something that we could, uh, depending on the car we're looking at. Um, and that that's where we would need to make that goal a little bit more specific, but that might give us an opportunity to save a down payment for, for that vehicle, um, you know, within two years, right? Maybe house might be two to five years and then maybe paying down our, our master's or our student loans becomes a five year or more goal, right? Mm -hmm. That's something as you're making your goals specific and you're prioritizing, that's gonna help as you're driving um, and making daily decisions. Like, is that getting me closer to that down payment on that car or that home or, paying down a specific student loan, or is this decision taking me a step away from that? Make sense? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. So let's, let's actually um, take one of those goals that, that you mentioned, and, and I want you all to think about it, but our goal map, and we did give you a copy of a goal map in some of the handouts. And so, you know, obviously print off as many as you need for the different financial goals we have. Because like I said, we don't all just have one financial goal, right? We want to allocate our money for these different goals that we're trying to achieve. So start with what do you want to achieve? So I'd like you guys to look at that goal you just wrote down. And I want you to make it as specific as you can. So in the example we just used that you shared, um, you know, let's, let's just say it's, I want to save for a car. What's going to make that more specific? Any thoughts? I mean, a car is pretty specific, but how specific can we get with a car? I think if you know, for example, what car a car you're looking at, what's the brand of the car, how much does it cost? For the cost, yes. Mm -hmm, the yeah. cost of the car. Yeah, absolutely. The time frame. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, drive, driving down to the actual type of car you want mm -hmm. is going to be helpful and, and make it the most specific you can and actually help you in determining how much money you're going to need, right? Because, you know, uh, uh, whether it's a Range Rover or a Kia or a Honda, they're, they're going to get us from A to B, right? But the reality is, is when we look at that, they come with different mm -hmm. things, right? So, so I want to use car. Okay. All right. A used car, something to get me from point A to B, but you know, something like not too expensive, something that I can afford, realistic, you know? Okay. So then looking at that, so right there, you, you, you're saying I want a certified pre-owned vehicle, or I want a, I want a used vehicle because I know that's what's going to fit into my budget. So how much money do you need? And that's going to give you a framework for setting that financial goal, right? So 
you're going to look at. I want a used uh, Honda Accord, right? Now we can start to do our research and say, well, this used Honda Accord is going to cost me X dollars. And that, you know, I, I really need this car within the next year, right? That's, that's your target goal date, right? I'm just throwing a number out there. I'm not saying that that's the case, but um, so what needs to be done in order to achieve that goal? Well, you know, if I look and I say, well, I'm going to get a, a used Honda and it's $12,000, um, $12,000 for this used Honda and I need it within the next year, that gives me some level of framework as to what needs to be done in order to achieve that goal. How much am I going to save each month? Do I want to buy it outright or do I want to if I have a year, do, do I have the ability to save X number of dollars to buy this outright? Or I want to just have $2,000 to put down and then I'm going to get a car loan in the amount of $10,000, right? So when we look at that, um, that's where making the goal as specific can, as possible can give you that really good framework. But like I said, we want to make sure that we're flexible when it comes to when it comes to um, setting goals, right? Because life happens. And I, I tell this to people all the time, it doesn't matter how good your money management plan is, life is going to continue to happen. What we wanna do is prepare ourselves and provide that added level of security like Stephanie mentioned, mentioned so that when we look at our goals, maybe we have to adjust the timeline a little bit, or maybe we have to adjust the amount we're saving, but. So we're, we put ourselves in a position where we don't have to give up on that financial goal, right? And financial goals can take different priorities at different times, um, at different times in our life, okay? So take a, take a second and think about your goal and, and try to map it out right now. I'll give you about a minute to do that. Can my, my chat box says it's disabled? Is I don't, I don't know how to fix that. Where's your chat box? I'm sorry, who is this? It's Rock. all disabled. It's, it's all been disabled, Sylvia. I don't know why, but it is. Why? Huh. Yeah, we can't participate. It's, <gasps> it's locked. Chat box. W would you like me to stop sharing? When she switched screens and then brought back the slides, it disappeared. Okay. Oh. How about now? Can I, I just, I stopped sharing briefly. See if. Can you check? Can anybody? It's no, it not says, yet. It says no? disabled. Yeah, yeah. Disabled. yeah, it says disabled for me as well, Sylvia. Why is that disabled? Let me see. Oh, no, I have this one here. Well, because there's not so many of us. We can always talk about, about it, I guess. We mm -hmm. can just keep. Chat box. It's Wendia. Direct. direct message. I'm trying to see if I can do the little punches. Participant chat. Here it is. Uh, everyone. How's that? Are still there? Oh, can you do it now? All this. Thanks, Sylvia. Oh, great. Thank it's you, good. guys. Thank you. I was pushing all the little buttons here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So as you're thinking about that, right? Um, and I'll pull the, um, I'll pull the, I'll share the screen again in a little bit. But I want you to think about what you want to achieve. What's that specific goal? Okay, how much is that going to cost? And you know that might, when we're setting goals, that may require a level of research that we have to do, right? To figure out exactly what the total cost is. So as you're looking at it right now, maybe it's not necessarily something that you can fill in, but you could estimate. And like I said. You can have several of these goal maps um, and, and utilize as many as you need. Um, when will the goal be achieved? What's your target date for that? And what do you need to do? And that gives us that framework or, or a plan or essentially a financial roadmap to something that we want to, um, that we want to achieve, okay? We've also provided you with a goal uh, priority, uh, priority sheet and essentially what that does is, um, as, as we just talked about, we, we can have several financial goals. We can have five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 financial goals, right? But we have to prioritize those so that we can allocate money um, towards reaching those financial goals and making sure that, um, that 
the amount that we're allocating sets us up for that success, right? To achieve that financial goal. So I really want you to, as you're starting to look at your financial goals, use that uh, priority sheet so that you can list every financial goal that you have, and then you can put a number around it. Like right now, this is the mo getting a vehicle is the most important thing for me right now. Um, in in some cases, it might be you know what I want to start an emergency fund, right? An emergency fund is essential to the budget. So how do I do that? Is that the most important thing that I have right now? So that um, so that in the event of an emergency, I do feel some level of security. Okay, so I want you to to utilize that prior the goal priority sheet so that you can list all of the goals you have and then figure out which one's going to be the most important to you to achieve right away. All right, so I'm seeing a few things in the chat here, so I'm going to stop. Okay, there's a California clean vehicle grant that will help with plug-in vehicles or electric. That's awesome. And uh, somebody wants to go to Sedona in July, save $500 a month for the trip, already paid for the stay. The trip's scheduled for the first week in July. So right there we have... Mm -hmm. Um, right there, we have a plan, right? We know exactly what we need to do in the event uh, to, to achieve that goal of going to Sedona. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'd encourage you guys to try that with each of the goals that you're that you're setting for yourself. Um, and one of the I'm going to share my screen again. So hopefully, I don't tell me if we lose the chat, and I'll. Um, I'll see if it's something on my end. Did we lose that? No, no, you're good. We're good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, okay. So, you know, when, when we're talking about priorities, I mean, the first thing is we need to distinguish between what we need and what we want, right? So a need is going to be anything that is a necessity, right? The want is anything other than necessities, okay? So now, again... Remember when we talk when we're talking about priorities. Obviously, there are needs that we all have, right? That we can't escape as humans. But for for other people, um, let me ask you this: Do you guys think um, in today's day and age, a cell phone is a need or a want? It's a necessity for me. Necessity. A need. A need. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think in today's day and age, how about a boat? What do you think? Do you think a want. Boat? Why? Why? What if you're a fisherman? Need. It's a need, right? Yes. For, it's a need. Yeah. For for a lot of us, again, looking at our own unique situations, that's going to help us. Again, we there are needs that we have that as humans we cannot escape, right? There are things right. that we have to that we have to prioritize and put before the things we want. But most of us on here would agree that a, a boat for us is all a want, right? Well, I, I don't really want a boat. I think they're expensive. I just want a friend with a boat. But, um, <laughs> but again, right, to, to the fishermen, that's going to be a need, right? So mm -hmm. we want to distinguish between our needs and our wants as we're starting to prioritize those goals, right? Mm -hmm. When you're looking at that goal priority sheet, distinguish between the needs and the wants, right? Typically the things that we need are going to become, they should become financial priorities to us. Then you want to create a list of family goals, right? It may not just be you setting the goal. And so I, I always say with the, um, with the athletes that I work with, it's easier when you're all striving towards one goal, right? If your right. goal is to win the Super Bowl, you're going to get a lot more people on the same page than people who have all these different, you know, 53 players on a team that have all these different individual goals of like, I want to score this many touchdowns or I want to, <laughs> you know, I want to run for this many yards, right? So when we're, when we're talking about financial priorities, it's important to hear from the people in our lives, right? And when we look at that, you can actually get people on the same page. A great example that I always give is, you know, if you're dealing with children um, and, and you're creating uh, a list of family goals, right? Our goal may be to, to get, in, get ourselves into a new home. Well, that goal, I mean, that might be a great goal for a child, but they may not fully understand that. 
However, if you can break that goal down and say, you know what, you're going to have your own bedroom when we get into this home and you can paint it any color you want, that allows people to get on the same page to strive to reach that same family goal. Then you want to prioritize that list. You want to look at all those goals, determine if their needs, wants, prioritize those, and then look at the wants and, and how do we get to where we want to be with each of these other financial goals that the entire family thinks is important. So this gives you, if, if you weren't able to open, this is essentially what that family financial goals worksheet will look like, right? So for, um, for somebody who wants to go on vacation right there, that's the number one priority. The entire family has decided that vacation's the most important. We're go it's gonna cost $900, we wanna do it next month. Um, we need to save $75 each month. If you keep this visible and you're able to refer to it, that oftentimes helps us in those daily financial decision-making, uh -huh. right? Because now I can say, well, you know what? Maybe I won't go to Starbucks for that extra, you know, that afternoon cup of coffee with my kids who are all learning virtually, right? Because that is going to be a $20 trip. And that $20, I can put towards that $75 so that when we go on vacation, we can have a much more enjoyable time in Sedona, okay? So you wanna make sure that you display that goal worksheet. You review it um, at least once a year. For our short-term goals, you wanna review it a little bit more often, but you wanna adjust your goals in response to the current situation, right? Like we said, life's gonna happen, things are gonna happen. It doesn't mean we forget about our goals, but we can adjust the timeline of a goal or we can adjust the amount that we're gonna save, which ultimately might adjust the timeline. Or we can look at our original specific goal and say, you know what, I still need that car to get from A to B, but maybe I'm not getting a $12,000 car. Maybe I'm getting a reliable, you know, $9,000 car or, or whatever the, the particular specific goal is. And continue to determine if it's realistic, right? Our circumstances are going to change. And if it's no longer a realistic goal for us based off of income and circumstance, then maybe we reevaluate that goal and, and look at either, we don't necessarily have to eliminate it, but we can adjust it, whether it's the level of um, how specific it is, how much it's going to cost, or when we want to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we're talking about, and you know, Beatrice is going to come and talk to you all about uh, a little bit more in depth about some of the tools that we can use to reach these financial goals. But really the first thing I want you to think about is I want you to think about your, your family financial values. And particularly if there are children in the household, I think this is a really important, um, important thing to consider because oftentimes, I mean, the first thing that you all told me when we we're talking about where did you learn about money? We learn it from our families, right? And so if we're right. under, if we understand our own family financial value, then we can make sure that we're getting everybody on the same page to reach the financial goals. I want you to think about your goals. What do you want to achieve financially? We all set goals on a daily basis, right? Professional, personal, um, whatever the type of goal is, but it's really important to remember that we should be setting financial goals because it gives us something to strive for. It, it kind of gives us a, a guidance around our financial decision-making on a daily, monthly, and yearly basis. Mm -hmm. Figure out or plan how to achieve those goals. Um, use that goal map, right? And, and start to, to put into motion some of those um, goals that you've put in that goal list and, and prioritize those and start to put those in motion with a, with a goal map. Okay. Make saving for your goal a priority, right? And so there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. In some cases, um, you could have money directly deposited, right? So that you don't see it, right? Put it into a savings goal, or I want to start an emergency savings fund. So every paycheck, I'm going to have, you know, $15, deposited into a different account so that I don't see it and I'm saving and I'm prioritizing that particular goal that I want. 
and achieve, achieving goals turns your needs and your wants into realities. All of those things that you, that you were brainstorming that you wanted and that you needed, when we achieve those goals, they become a reality for us. So um, I want you to think about that as you're setting those financial goals. And then I know Beatrice will come back and talk to you about how to create a budget so that those financial goals do become, uh, do become a reality and, um, and we can achieve those financial goals in the long run. Great. So I'm gonna open it up to any questions that anybody has on how to set that financial goal. or priorities, any questions? I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see everybody's beautiful face. You can drop any questions you have in the chat. I know some of you didn't, uh, didn't receive some of the, uh, didn't receive the handouts or if you, I think I saw that in the chat, but, um, but we'll make sure that you get those handouts. Yes. Uh, particularly the goal map and the priority sheet. And then you can work through with your families or, you know, with your friends or with people um, that are supporting you to figure out what some of those financial goals are and, and where they stand in, in a priority in your list. Let's see. Great presentation from Monica. Thank you, Monica. Yes, it was excellent presentation. I really enjoyed it. Yes, Mara. It was really nice, Mara. Uh, yes. It was a really yes. great presentation. Great. And I see handouts. Yep. The handouts would be great. We'll get you those. Make sure we send them out. Uh, yeah. I think I sent them out with all of my, uh, anyone that I emailed should have gotten a copy of them. Mm -hmm. If you still don't have them, let us know and we'll uh, send them out. We'll again. resend them. Because mm -hmm. we have them for everybody. Great. Yeah. And we're happy to, to work with anybody or help anybody who um, needs to work through setting those financial goals or understanding the, a little bit more specifically your own financial priorities or your own financial values. Um, yes. Beatrice, you'll meet her in, a, in a, probably a few presentations. Um, she's always happy to help. And I'm, I'm, all, I'm only an email away or a phone call away. So I'm happy to help as well. Yes. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll be seeing uh, Beatrice at one o'clock. Yeah, great. Yep. Okay. Thank perfect. you so much. Appreciate it. Nice meeting you. All right. It was great meeting everyone. Thanks for coming. Any questions? Let me know. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank great you. job. I loved it.